Today we're gonna to talk about restorations on my left and original cars on our right. Is that anything else? Do I just need to do that again? Welcome to The Pace Notes, a podcast about all things Porsche. My name is Matt Kenyon. I am the owner of McKellis Classics, and on my right, I have Greg Bartley, our project manager. Today, we're gonna discuss the difference between a restoration, which we have on our left, and an original car, which we have on our right. The one on the left is a 1973 and a half uh, chartreuse green uh, 911T, and on the right, we've got a 1972 tangerine orange uh, 911T as well. Um, they are two different years. There are some differences between these cars. Um, the Chartreuse has been restored to original quality. Um, it has recently been purchased. Uh, the, own, the new owner has been changing some things out on it, so there have been a few things changed, but when you restored the car, it was restored to the original um, condition. Uh, this 72 is basically all original. Um, there's a few things that have been done to it, um, but for the most part, it's a very original car. Uh, what do you have to say about these cars, Greg? Uh, well, they're, they're great examples. Uh, you know, the, the biggest thing to, to talk about here is, you know, how to spot an original car versus a restoration. And restorations come in a variety of flavors. You know, they can be a sympathetic restoration, which is where you take a car and you basically try to restore it to an original condition uh, without looking like you did. Um, and then there's the, what we would call an over restoration where you want everything to look brand new, you want to drive brand new, um, and you don't really care about how it was done in the past. Mm -hmm. And so you're trying to apply today's technologies and methodologies to uh, the restoration process. Yes. So some of the differences about these two cars, um, and we're going to start with the exterior of the car. Uh, as you can see, the Chartreuse is a fresh repaint. It is the original color, uh, Chartreuse green, which is pretty rare to see. Um, but this is has been painted in base clear. Uh, it was Sickens paint that was used. Comparing that to the Tangerine, which is actually mostly original paint, um, half I think half of the car from the door up is original paint, and that is just um, single stage, so which is Correct. what they used back in the day. Talk about the differences between single stage and the newer processes, which is base clear. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where single stage, it was just shot at once. Uh, whereas base clear, you've got uh, your, your pigment sprays and then you have a clear coat that goes on top of that, which uh, makes for a, a hardier and um, a more durable paint, um, but is not historically accurate. and so. Um, that's one of the things you can definitely spot out on a car right off the bat. Um, and you, can, you can notice that when you do a, a polish or, or wax. You'll see uh, that difference when you actually start to rub a compound or a polish over that paint, where if you have base clear, you won't see any color come off. But mm -hmm. with single stage, you'll see that color coming off onto your, uh, your buffer pads. So, uh, And a lot of people do, and this, the Chartreuse car, one of the things we did update, we did use uh, base clear. Um, but a lot of people will try to use the single stage. In California, it's kind of tough because the law is kind of, well, actually, can you do it? You can do single stage you can. in California. Uh, what you can. What you're stuck with is a, a water-based paint okay. um, versus an oil-based paint, which you can get in all the other states. Yeah. So um, some people prefer to go with the original single stage, um, you know, oil-based mm -hmm. uh, or lacquer-based uh, paints. Um, it just depends on where you want to ship your car out of California to have that done. Next, I would say one other thing to look at between an original car and a restored car uh, on the exterior of the car is, you know, the wheels. Uh, on this car to the right, the Tangerine, uh, you can see a little bit of fading on the wheels. Uh, so the wheels are originally finished in uh, hard anodized with a uh, painted black uh, around the, sp the lobes of the wheels. Um, and in 73, that was the correct way to do it. Uh, the Chartreuse has done that same way, um, so they are done in similar ways. I think on the uh, Tangerine, you'll see the process was a little different. They dip, right. I think they dipped the wheels yeah, to there's, a certain... Yeah, there's a bright dip process, and mm -hmm. then they hard anodize. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really hard to find uh, services that can follow that same process. So you can really notice that um, in some of these restored wheels. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, one of the other things to look at on, on these, from an originality standpoint, is the date stamp. So uh, on the inside of these, these Fook wheels, uh, there's date stamps, which should really sit between, you know, five or six months before um, the vehicle was delivered. So if you've got a 66, you should have, uh, or you have a 67, you should have 66 date stamp wheels. Um, you know, there's no real hard and fast rules to that. Um, but you'll find on these cars, uh, they'll be on this uh, 72, we'll have really early 72 stamps or even 71 stamps on those. Mm -hmm. That's correct. <laughs> and a lot of times you actually find, uh, you'll find reproduction wheels, very common on these cars. So um, the Fook wheels are an alloy wheel, lightweight, came out in 67, mm -hmm. uh, first came out on the, the 67 911S and uh, cheaper reproductions as the cost of these wheels went up you'll find they're cast mm -hmm. and you'll find you know incorrect stampings um, you'll find they're a lot heavier so they're they're really easy to spot uh, once you get that car up on a lift yeah, and one of the, so on the actual the original wheels you'll find the stamping inside the center of the wheel there's little um, ridges and that's where you'd see the date stamp on those mm -hmm. and on the other ones they're they don't really even have a D stamp. Most of them don't have D stamp. Right. Yeah, early, um, early wheels don't have a stamp. That, and you'll see the Porsche emblem right. on the back as well. Um, but the, yeah. And the little emblem looks like actually looks like a little fox heads. The uh, the logo for for the Fook. So a little triangle with little whiskers on it. Mm -hmm. So another thing on the exterior of the car um, that is pretty big to look at when you're looking at a, an original car. Uh, you definitely want to see the orange bar uh, hood crest. Um, and especially, it's, it's awesome when you see them in just perfect shape. The, right. uh, the tangerine is a really nice one. It's not even on it because the original owner took it off because it was so nice. Right. We have that in just its own little Has box. Has the right patina. <laughs> it just looks fantastic. And you can spot them a mile away. Oh, yeah. So, and then on those, you want them to be, you know, on the Chartreuse has an orange bar badge, um, but it's shiny and it's gold and it's it's a new badge where right. versus the old ones were like a bronze. And, and you can tell that it's an aged badge, but it was well, right. well aged. And it, yeah, you can tell they're reproduced. And I've even tried to take some of the newer ones and bury them for <laughs> half a year and see if I can get some patina on there. And they just crust away and they're, they're just not the same quality. Yeah. And then another thing is the, the headlights. Um, you want to mm -hmm. touch a little bit on those? Yeah, headlights. Um, you know, early on you had the, your, your sugar scoops uh, for the American models. Uh, which were later, um, you know, replaced with the uh, the H4s from the European market. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very common upgrade that people do on on these older cars, and uh, is even well accepted within the restoration community or the originality mm -hmm. community because they realize that the H1s just didn't have the same uh, lumen output as the H4s. Or look, the look yeah. of the look of the H4s is is just better. Everyone likes them more. Absolutely, and, yeah, it's 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 it, that's that's an upgrade for these cars. Right. Um, another thing to look at on the exterior of the car is the rear, uh, the rear deck lid. You'll you'll see the grills and the emblems. Um, on an original car like the Tangerine, it's completely original on the rear of it, and it's the the anodizing, the black anodizing is, which is correct for a '73, '72. You'd see the black anodizing. Um, I think it was actually halfway through '72, right. so this would be a later '72 car, um, but on the tangerine, you'll see it's a little faded, which shows the originality, where on the chartreuse cards, it's a dark black, which is basically restored. And that's how it will be when you restore a car. Right. Um, and going along with that, just the trim work in general. You look for, you know, on an original car, you're going to look for some, types, some type of wear. Um, like on the chrome work uh, on the Targas, you'll see on the chrome work, you'll see a little bit of pitting here and there. Um, that's some stuff to look for that's original. You don't want everything to be perfect, otherwise it's probably restored. Right. You may see shrinkages in the seals, mm -hmm. especially on S trim. We've got the rubber on the front and rear bumpers. They'll start to shrink over time, and you may see you know, a half-inch gap between the edge of the, um, uh, the deco trim and the rubber. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically, if you see a car that looks perfect and they're telling you it's an original car, it's probably not. Um, but yeah, I mean, on the exterior of the car, you're just looking for wear and use. Um, but at the same time, if it's they're claiming it's a low mileage car, super original car, then you, you don't want to see, you don't want over, you don't want that to be too much, right. um, I guess. And so, but yeah, and on a restoration car, um, it can be a little bit of anything really, but it's supposed to be a very clean. <laughs> Depends on the goal of the client, you know, if they're looking for that sympathetic restoration or they're looking for that full mm -hmm. restoration. 
Um, you know, these restorations can go in all different directions. And, you know, hot rods right now are really hot. So you're finding people that are spending less time going for the as delivered from the factory and more how do I, you know, get this car to drive the way I want it mm -hmm. um, and, you know, put out the power and the handling that they're looking for. Yeah, you're getting a lot of that today. The, um, the hot rods market has taken a huge jump. And so you're seeing a lot of people who, you know, they've, they've got, they, they want the car to look original, but yet they, they want to bump up the power right. or do some, you know, some stuff to transmission, suspension, all that kind of stuff, but they still want the car to look original. So, yeah, I mean, it's all stuff to look sure. for when you're looking at these cars. I mean, these early cars, you know, uh, up to 73, uh, the biggest uh, power plant they had was a 2.4, mm -hmm. unless you have an RS, which was a 2.7, um, but I doubt you're really modifying that car. Um, <laughs> You know, you're finding people who are shoehorning three sixes, three eights into these. Moving on to the uh, the interior of the car. So there's a lot of telltale signs on these cars on whether it's been restored or whether it's original uh, and looking at the interior. And you can look at the condition of the materials on the inside is, is a great indicator because these are 50 year old cars. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, Porsche had leather and vinyl, which they called leatherette. You know, what's the condition of that? You know, these driver's seats. Um, saw a lot of wear and so if you see a driver's seat that looks brand new chances are it's been reupholstered or replaced Yeah, you want a little bit of wear, but you don't want it to be overboard You don't want the seat to be perfect when you go in there and if they're saying it's an original car um, Another thing I love to look at and I mentioned in the last podcast uh, was the dash I mean on, on an original car Even a low mileage original car. You'll still sometimes see a little little crack here and there, but right. And I almost like seeing that when I'm looking at these original cars because a little crack is okay and it shows the originality and it shows it's not too perfect. If it's too perfect, it's probably a new dash, but right. it's nice to see that little crack here and there um, just to show that it's the original dash. Sure. Um, as well as the seats. The seats, they, uh, especially the comfort seats, it's easy to tell on because they have that crease in the middle. Right. Um, some restorers, they'll put the, the, the a bigger U in the in, where, where that crease is when really Porsche, it wasn't a deep U, it was kind of just like a, a slight crease. Right, Which, what you also find is over stuff when they're reupholstering. So you'll find the rear seats uh, and, and even the front seats, they'll have either a firmer uh, foam or they'll just add too much foam. And mm -hmm. you can definitely tell it's not from the factory. Yeah, no, you, and I mean, and that's okay for a restoration car. Sure. Um, and it's, you know, it really at that point, it's what the customer wants. Mm -hmm. If he wants firm seats or, you know, a little more comfortable or whatever. But yeah, I mean, looking at the seats, seats, honestly, even in any car today, seats is one of the number one things you'll look at when someone tells you it's a low mileage car, because they say it's a 20,000 mile car, but the seats are ripped and torn, then right. it's probably not. Um, so it's good to know, kind of look at that crease, see if it's still there. If it's if they're saying it's a low mileage car, it doesn't need to be perfect, but you, you want to still be able to see it with a low mileage car. Right. Um, another thing is the door pockets. Uh, with the with the low mileage original car, um, the door pockets should be pretty straight. Uh, you don't want them to be beat up, and sure. you know a lot of these cars, these older cars that have been driven and. The, the pockets are, are definitely beaten up. Um, on an original car, they should be, I mean, on a, a restoration car, they should be perfect. Right. Um, so yeah, on an original car, you want a little bit of wear, just like everything else, but you yeah, know. Yeah, they're recovered they're they're cardboard. Yeah. And so you're fine reproductions now due to, uh, you know, the fact that they were cardboard and wear out, they're now made of fiberglass. Mm -hmm. And so you can spot those just by tapping on them, you can find out that it's a uh, reproduction. Just hear them. Yeah. And they're expensive, so a lot of people won't even bother replacing them because yeah, it's eighteen hundred dollars. You know, one of my favorite spots to look at is the headliner, and yeah. a lot of people don't pay attention to the materials used on the headliner. But you'll find uh, a good indicator for me is the pattern. Mm -hmm. And so, if you look at the dots, uh, the spacing on um, a lot of the original headliners create a hexagon, and a lot of the reproduction materials that are being used, they'll create a diamond. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's that's a clear indicator for me. And some of the later cars, you know, they switched over to um, from a, an ivory colored material to uh, a black material. And you know, knowing the the lineage and the nuances between the, the models and the years um, plays a key role there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether there's a grain, a texture to that headliner, yeah. um, and that ties in with the sun visors, right? Yeah. You see, we have two targets here, and the sun visors are black on one side and black on the other side. On a coupe, you'd be black, black on, and white, and white or light mm -hmm. ivory on the other side. So 
Um, and very crusty, right? And very we, crusty. We love crusty sun visors. Absolutely. Most of them are. Everyone we get in here is <laughs> just hanging by a thread, wire-framed, and all the foam inside is disintegrated. <laughs> and you hate to replace them because you love the originality. So, moving on, probably the last thing to talk about the interior would be the carpet. Mm -hmm. um, and this goes with just about every carpet. Every car is, you know, if it's a low-mileage car, you should see a little bit of wear. Um, with, with the... With the low mileage cars, you can tell that it's original car because it's a little more, um, you can see it's a little more dried out mm -hmm. and it's a little more stretched out. Um, right. With with new, with new like a new carpet on a 73 and a half, like this one, it's it's gonna look perfect. It's 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 gonna right. look too nice. You can tell when it's new carpet versus older carpet. Right, and it was it a carpet kit. If it was a restoration, did someone actually uh, custom cut for that car? And what's the texture? What's the, what's, what's the weave of that carpet? So. You know, earlier cars, your 356s, your really early 911s, uh, they had a square weave carpet. Mm -hmm. And then you moved on to, I believe it was in the 66, 67 model years, they moved on to um, Perlon, and mm -hmm. you start getting into Velours in the higher end models. And then at a certain point, they switched over uh, exclusively to that nicer Velour carpet. Mm -hmm. uh, but you still find remnants of a combination where you have square weave in the front trunk and you have, you know, Velour or Perlon on the inside of the car, depending mm -hmm. on the trim level. So moving on, let's go into the, the trunk area. Um, in the 72, 73 range, you'd start to see uh, Porsche started to, I think in 70, 70, 71, they were blacked out in there, correct? And then in, in 72, 73, I think they had a little bit of overspray. And what? I don't know. <laughs> don't, don't look like that, act like you know. <laughs> well, I don't want to be spitting out. Incorrect information. No, 72, 73 is supposed to be like a little bit of overspray. 71, 72. 70, 70, 71, we're supposed to be black. Okay, yeah, let's redo redo the trunk because you got me. No, it's fine. Leave that in? Leave it in. Really? Wow. All right, fair enough. Well, let's see. If, if people comment on it and say I'm wrong, great. Another thing to look for in the trunk, and this is just more of when you're looking at buying a car. Um, I always look at the inner corners towards the front of the of the trunk. So right. you look by the battery is, and you want to make sure that there's no crinkles or anything in there because that mm -hmm. signs of an accident. Right. Um, and besides that, yeah, you're looking for the overspray. You're looking the for rust. rust. Yeah, you know, what's that suspension pan look like? That horseshoe. One that, of the most common things replaced on these cars. The batteries are right there, so the rust would just corrode that all the time. Right. Um, you say batteries because in the short wheelbase, you only had a single battery. Mm -hmm. Long wheelbase and 69 on, they switched to two batteries, right, for mm -hmm. load distribution. 74, it went back to one battery. Right. So Weird little quirk in <laughs> automotive history. So uh, they thought it was a good idea at the time, and it wasn't. Right. So moving on to the engine bay, um, some things to look at on a restoration car. You obviously you want to open the deck lid and it to just look, you know, perfect. Right. Um, you know, a lot of people now are zinc plating. Uh, the original way to do it was a cadmium plating. Right. Uh, so I think zinc plating is a little more bright. It's a little brighter. Yeah, it really depend on uh, what the component was and mm -hmm. whether, you know, whether cadmium was used, whether zinc was used. Was it yellow zinc? Was it a white zinc or a clear zinc? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you can have a whole debate on this on any of the forums on what was cadmium plated, what was zinc plated, uh, which one's stronger. It's, you know, you won't find a right answer to those. That's true. And uh, now in the engine bay, what areas would you see the cadmium or zinc plating? Oh, you're fine. Just all the miscellaneous hardware, um, bolts, nuts. You know, if it's an older car, uh, you're looking at the relay panels, you know, which, uh, which U-clips are used, um, which uh, if you look at the, uh, uh, the fuel pump, what bracket's being used, mm -hmm. uh, the screws, you know, is it really period correct for that build? Mm -hmm. um, you know, other things I look at in the engine bay, you know, uh, if they're carbureted, is it the right set of carburetors? You know, if it's an S, an early S, you should have a set of IDSs mm -hmm. uh, versus a set of IDAs. Um, has someone done a swap? You know, was it was supposed to be an MFI car, and then the MFI pump failed, and so they didn't know how to work on it. They put on carbs. And bringing up MFI, so the '72 is a MFI 911T. It was actually the first year that they came out with the T being an MFI car. Before this, in '71, um, all the way back it was carbureted cars. Right. Um, so it's '72 and 
um, 73 car MFI cars are pretty desirable. Right. Um, on the left, uh, the Chartreuse is a 73 and a half, so that makes it a CIS, which is Continuous Injection System. Right. Um, both of these are magnesium cases, uh, but the 73 and a half, they were trying to basically test out, it was their test dummy for this new Continuous Injection System. Um, the cage at Tronic is what they called it, right? Right. Um, and so they were testing it out for their next model year, which is the 74. Every car that they had was a uh, continuous injection system with exception to the European uh, Carrera. Carreras, right. which are very desirable these right. days. Those stayed MFI, and that is the exact same engine that's in the 73 RS. Right. Um, what was great about the 73 and a half is you've got all the reliability out of that CIS system with the body style of the long hood. So mm -hmm. people really didn't like those impact bumpers, which, you know, they're growing on people and that, that market's moving up. But uh, it got you that reliability with all the looks of the mm -hmm. long hood. Oh, yeah. And the, the, one of the funny things about the 73 and a half, they were known to get like 25 miles to the gallon right. because of that new uh, injection system mm -hmm. that they put on there. So that's kind of just a fun little fact. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, anything else on the engine? Um, well, I mean, we go back to um, well, numbers matching. Numbers we matching. didn't talk about that. So Absolutely. one of the key things when you're buying an I-11 or, you know, it's one of the first things you're going to look at is your car numbers matching. Um, you can't really verify it without a COA or a Cardex. Um, right. COA I, being Certificate of Authenticity from Porsche. Yes, and you can't. And a Cardex stopped at 69. Is that correct? Yeah, Cardex is where the uh, the factory's internal documentation for the car. So that's mm -hmm. that's what the uh, Certificate of Authenticity Authenticity is based off of. Yes, and so that will verify what came in your car and what the original engine was mm -hmm. and what the original transmission was. Right. Um, so we're going to find this. Uh, engine number is right under your when you're looking at your engine bay mm -hmm. on the fan right below it to the right on the side you'll see uh, six or seven numbers seven yeah, you numbers? see it in script next to a little star stamp um, and we'll have shots of that when we go around the car mm -hmm. and so and that should read you know depending on the year uh six so these would be like a six one three or a six three yeah it'll be within the, the the code range for that particular model year mm -hmm. And so, and so that's that's where the engine number is, and the transmission number is. It's when you you can't really see it unless you get under the car, um, yeah. and it's on the basically the midsection of the transmission yeah. under there. It's right, right where the case halves meet for the transmission, and uh, it's a very common area that you'd bottom out on in these cars, yeah. and you'd scrape that that but number off. It's more common to probably be missing the transmission than the engine. Absolutely. Um, and a lot of people don't think that's a huge deal. I mean, that just really depends on who's who's looking at the car, what collect, what the collector's all about, or what right. the buyer's all about. So, um, but yeah, that's you know as, yeah. as far as the engine goes, I think that's yeah, having a numbers matching powertrain is is the the biggest mm -hmm. concern for people uh, when it comes to originality and, and buying a car that they're going to treat as a, a collector item. Well, and then now I you know we've been receiving calls here. Of co Customers saying, hey, it doesn't need to be a matching number engine. It doesn't right. need this because I want to hot, hot rod the car. I want a hot rod. I don't care if it's original matching. Right. Matching they don't want to feel bad about modifying an yeah. original car. And, you know, it's pretty cool. I mean, that's that's fun to get into that kind of stuff because we we've been getting these customers. Even this, this the Chartreuse customer, he bought the car um, from us, and it was, you know, restored back to original. But now he's adding a front fender oil cooler, mm -hmm. and he's adding the stainless steel exhaust. And... Um, just a bunch of just oh, yeah. other little modifications, which is pretty cool. I mean, yeah. it's personalizing. It's staying matching numbers. It's staying all that stuff, but it's cool to see him kind of personalizing it to himself. Um, so, yeah, you know, we're starting to see that a lot more, yeah. and when we've liked it. It, it, it. It's cool to see. You don't have to stick to a script when it comes to building the car. Mm -hmm. You don't have to try and find the exact way that car was built. Um, you're just custom tailoring it based on what the, the customer is looking for, which is really fun. Oh, yeah. People love it. I love it. I think it's fun. Right. Um, and going back to the, the COA and uh, the Cardex, you know, if you're looking for an original collector car, documentation is is key. And it's really hard to find on some of these cars. And we come across them. We've got a full maintenance manual. We've got, you know, original owner's book, which, mm -hmm. they, you know, they repop. But having all the uh, the maintenance history and, you know, if they purchase the car, we've got one car here, a 69 911T that's available um, that has, you know, original delivery documentation when it was you know in germany they took delivery of it and there's you know there's pictures of them in front of old nazi barracks and it's just amazing stuff you're, you're talking about my favorite car i yeah. love that thing it, you've got a we've got a full booklet of when he went and picked up the car in 1969 he took pictures in the factory stuttgart 
of him walking through there and you're seeing cars assembled and then he's got a picture of all of his all, all of his trip through there and then he's got a full on documentation of all the mileage mile, mileage that ended up being only 30,000 original miles right. now and uh, it was a one owner car oh, that's cool and that's yeah. definitely something you're right that's another huge thing you've got to look at when you're looking at an original car that is a huge right. that can definitely increase the price of that car by having all that because that Ties is problems yeah so and, and that's that's huge and I've, it's so much easier to sell a car or get someone to buy the car when you can prove everything and it's Absolutely. it's tough to get not all cars have that and some of them you just got to look at them and and know what to look for in order to know that that's the original right mileage. do you have gaps in history do you have the whole thing is it mm-hmm. starting from the 90s on i mean it's it's a yeah. hodgepodge yeah so um so I think lastly, uh, underneath the car. Mm-hmm. Um, so on the Chartreuse, uh, you'll look underneath it and it looks like a brand new car. Maybe right. better. It, it, un- underneath the Chartreuse is maybe a little over restored. It's completely yeah. painted under there. Um, but we did it, to, uh, tried to do it to the original spec. You got the black uh, marks that go from the side, to mm-hmm. the, from the front to the rear on the uh, rockers. Right. Um, but yeah, underneath it looks like a new car. Oh, um, brand new Zinc hardware. Oh yeah, you can you can you can tell. But it's uh, you know it was that was the uh, the goal for that restoration. Mm-hmm. And on the Tangerine, you'll see. Uh, I mean, obviously it was driven fifty thousand miles, fifty something, fifty two, three thousand miles. Yeah. You'll see the Cosmoline. You'll see you'll see that it was driven. Underneath the engine is not perfect. You don't want it to be perfect because it's an original car. Right. It's not a restored car. And you said Cosmoly. That's, that's not something that you see on restorations. That's also another clear indicator. So that was what they put on these cars when they were shipping them from Europe to wherever. Right. Um, just to protect them and coat them and all that kind of stuff. Sure. And you see in the, uh, I think it was the 964s, and even before that, you'll see these cars were just loaded with it because right. it's, we've seen some 964s come in and you can't even see the engine because there's so much Cosmo right. in the way. Or is it one of the dealer options, right, that they could spray on that uh, the protecting undercarriage protector, which was just a mess. <laughs> it just covered everything. And, you know, maybe great in, uh, in an area where they salted the roads or there's a lot of snow, but it's just it's a pain to work on so one of the reasons we did this podcast today was because we've got and we actually started off of original cars right um we started uh just looking for cars that were low mileage because they should be the most original cars out there it's a challenge yeah so and um we also restore cars so we kind of want to just tell the difference between the two so if anyone's ever looking for an original car even interested in this 1972 uh 911T only has 58,000 original miles. It's the original color of tangerine has some original paint on it. Um, give us a call as well as if someone wants to restore a car with us mm-hmm. or uh, look for a restoration that's in, in progress. Right. Um, or look for a car that we don't have. You yeah. Know, we're, we're very knowledgeable in these areas, so we can we can help find and, and yeah. seek out that car that you're looking and for. And we've actually been doing that recently. There's right. been customers calling us looking for certain cars, and they just want to make sure that that car hasn't been hit or hasn't been any accidents mechanically right. it's sound and then you know that they'll have us go out and check the car out and even do a ppi with our technicians here mm-hmm. um before they buy that so right. um yeah if anyone is interested in any of those services or interested in any of the cars we have go on our website um click the link and uh yeah subscribe for more